good to have you all out with us this evening. And those of you who've joined us via Facebook and YouTube, take your hymn books. We're going to sing number 523, Victory in Jesus. Number 523, if you'll stand as we sing. I want to hear you and shout out, praise God. If you are saved, you should be praising out to God for being saved. Amen. Amen. Brother Tim, I want to hear you from back here. Praise God. Amen. Now verse 2. I heard about his healing, of his cleansing power revealing, how he made the lame to walk again and cause the blind to see. And then I cry, dear Jesus, come heal my broken spirit. And somehow Jesus came and brought to me the victory. Oh, victory in Jesus, my Savior forever. He sought me and he bought me with his singing tonight. Amen. Somebody, some little one back there got the praise God. Got into, that's good. Amen. We're glad to have you. Hope you had a good afternoon and a hot one. Amen. I'm not complaining. Amen. A little bit of summertime here in Pennsylvania is not a bad thing. Uh, we're sure glad to have you here tonight, though. We've got a lot going on tonight. Uh, choir's going to sing for us in just a second. We've got the uh, uh, Name Your Price or Shaved Ice. Amen. Doesn't get any better than that. And the, 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 all the proceeds are going to our missions account. And we're pretty excited about that as well. So I want to thank Brother Abraham for uh, his just ingenuity on that and uh, driving the thoughtfulness behind that. That's awesome. And excited for our little lambs tonight. We have a baptism tonight. Miss Sydney's getting baptized tonight. So excited about that as well. So, amen. That's exciting. 
Uh, so uh, we've got the baptistry worked out where we're not losing water as fast as we're putting it in there. And uh, the water's warm. So, Miss Sydney, we've got two things going for you. You're going to have water, and it's going to be warm. So, And maybe you'd want it cold tonight. It's been pretty hot out there. So, uh, But uh, we're excited about her baptism, following the Lord, and just uh, what a simple one and very precious act of obedience. We're pretty excited about that. We're glad to have you here with us. Glad to have our friends watching on Facebook and YouTube. And glad to have the opportunity to gather together as a church family. Brother Bajun, would you mind leading us to the throne tonight, asking for his presence and blessing? Yes. Amen. You may be seated this time on our church choir. Turn to number 200. The old account was settled. Number 200. And if you'll stand as we sing, number 200. There was a time on earth when in the book of heaven an old account was standing for sins yet unforgiven. My name was at the top, and many things below. I went unto the keeper, and settled long ago, long ago, long ago. Yes, the old account was settled long ago, hallelujah. And the record's clear today, for he washed my sins away. When the old account was settled long ago, the old account was large and growing every day, for I was always sinning and never tried to pay. But when I looked ahead and saw such pain and woe, I said that I would settle. I settled long ago, long ago. Yes, the old account was settled long ago. Hallelujah, and the record's clear today. For 
washed my sins away. And the old account was settled long ago. On the third, when at the judgment bar I stand before my king, and he the book will open, he cannot find a thing. Then will my heart be glad while tears of joy will flow. Because I had it settled, and settled long ago, long ago, long ago. Yes, the old account was settled long ago. Hallelujah, and the record's clear today, for he washed my sins away. And the old account was settled long ago. When in the happy home, my Savior's home above, I'll sing redemption story and praise Him for His love. I'll not forget that book with pages white as snow, because I came and settled, and settled long ago, long ago, long ago. Yes, the old record's clear today, for he washed my sins away, and the old account was settled long ago. On the last, O oh, sinner, seek the Lord, repent of all your sin, for thus he hath commanded, if you would enter in, and then if you should live a hundred years below, up there you'll not regret it. clear today for he washed my sins away and the old account was settled long ago amen good singing there brother sean, brother sean. you may be seated thank you so, some of you need to learn how to sing that from western P pennsylvania you gotta say worst but uh sooner or later we'll get it right but uh, no, so uh, Pastor already announced and reminded you all that we got the shaved ice uh, tonight. So uh, make sure that you stay for some shaved ice. And hopefully you brought some friends and little kids are excited about that, the little lambs. Um, so uh, Vacation Bible School, again, we've got, we had a very successful sign-up Sunday. We got the sheet all filled up, but there is plenty of room for more helpers. Uh, we're going to need some, uh, still some uh, help. So please, if you haven't signed up, please see me. I've got several uh, positions and several things that you can do. And uh, there'll be more uh, meetings upcoming, uh, likely uh, probably almost every week leading up to Vacation Bible School. We'll be passing out more information and handing out all the details that uh, the teachers and the helpers need. Um, also, we wanted to uh, we gave a big plug this morning for Queen Esther and the Sight and Sound, so hopefully you can make it out for that. Uh, we have about, uh, what do we count, 27, I think, signed up, and we have space for 40. So uh, you've got plenty of room for you to hop on the bus and enjoy the Sight and Sound out in Lancaster, Pennsylvania. Uh, it's Lancaster from out there, not yes. Lancaster, right? Yep. right? Okay, so if you need to know how to pronounce more things incorrectly, please... <laughs> Please come to my Sunday school, right? Those of you that are in it would understand. All right. Uh, so, uh, also, uh, we got choir practice next week, 5 p.m. And don't, what's that? No practice. No practice. It's 4th of July. Man, one of these days I'll figure that out. But, uh, yeah, it's a holiday. So, choir, you're off. And we have a sign-up sheet here for the Patriotic Fellowship. So, make sure you sign up. Uh, we need this. I think we maybe didn't have that out. Didn't have it out we didn't have it out this morning. So please, next Sunday after the evening service, we'll have a fellowship. So uh, do, what are we bringing? Was there uh, instruction here? Hot dogs and buns and condiments. All right. And so folks bring picnic food. All right. So bring your picnic food. It'll be kind of a uh, you know bring a, you know well, all kinds of stuff. My I got, I got my mind's just going a million miles here. But uh, I'll bring some linguine salad. So don't bring that. But all the rest of the stuff, you know, bring all the good, fun stuff. And, um, you know, maybe we'll have another pie contest, and I'll beat you on that again also. Uh, but, no, I'm, I'm joking. I made all that up. But uh, so 
bring your friends and family and we'll have a church fellowship. It's a patriotic fellowship and uh, we will not be blowing anyone's hands off. Okay? All right. So that's all I have for this evening until you remind me of what else I forgot. So thank you. It's okay, Brother Sean, I get the same way, but Mrs. Johnson, you make sure you have that linguine salad for next Monday, I'll be, I'll be what he was saying from up here. <laughs> I caught my wife before church, so I'll admit it in front of the congregation that I already told her what I wanted. So, so, I'm, so I'm not any worse than you, Brother Sean. <laughs> Take your hymn books, turn to number 394 as we uh, come to the closing of the song service here. We'll have our special before pastor comes also, but uh, song number 394, I Need Thee Every Hour. Amen. Number 394. I need thee every hour, most gracious Lord. No tender voice like thine can peace afford. I need question for Sean. Why isn't linguine salad a fun food? You said all the other fun foods, but that, you know, the exclusion of linguine. It could be fun. It could be a challenge to eat. It is a fun food for those who try to eat it. Yeah. It's good. And jello is always fun to try to get on your spoon or fork. Yeah, it's all good. Hey, spork. Get a spork and you can take care of both of them. All right. We're glad to have you here tonight and excited about uh, our, our, our study tonight. We're going to be in the book of Proverbs again. God just kept leading me back there. So we're going to be in Proverbs chapter 30. Uh, hope our study this morning in Song of Solomon was a profitable one. I, I really um, just feel burdened, uh, even in just my own spirit, uh, uh, to appreciate the love and, the, and, the, and cherish the, uh, the closeness that our Heavenly Father wants with us. And uh, I want to give him that. I want to make sure that I'm I'm up close and personal there, so I hope our message this morning was a help. Uh, we're glad to have you here tonight, and looking forward to our special. So we'll invite our special. Who's singing for us tonight? Or my special? Oh, okay, the ladies are. Because I would not be very special tonight. My voice is a little raspy. Amen. Miss Pam, are you nervous? No, you're not nervous. That's, a, that's okay. Amen. We'll hear our ladies sing after that. We'll dismiss our little lambs, and then take a look at Proverbs chapter 30. Platform. I got gotcha. you. <clears throat> Some people 
say there is no way salvation is real and there's nothing in this old time religion that you can feel and how can it be that I can believe in a God I've not seen there's no such thing as life after death and heaven's a dream If I'm dreaming, don't wake me Just let me dream on For this is the best way of living That I've ever known I'm having a good time So just leave me alone Sweet peace I have found, so don't wake me now, just let me dream on. I can't explain this wonderful change that came over me. Once I was bound by chains of sin, but now I'm set free. They say that God's dead and I'm out of my head But one thing I'm sure If this is a sign that I'm losing my mind I hope I'll never be cured If I'm dreaming, don't wake me Just let me dream on For this is the best way of living that I've ever known I'm having a good time So just leave me alone Sweet peace I have found So don't wake me now Just let me dream on Thank God I am free, free, free From this world of sin Washed in the blood of Jesus, I've been born again. Hallelujah, I'm saved, saved, saved by His wonderful grace. I'm so glad that I found out He would bring me out and show me the way. Sweet peace I have found, so don't wake me now. Just let me dream on. Thank you. Amen. Don't wake me. Amen. Don't wake me. It always seems like the alarm clock's always waking you from the good dreams. <laughs> you never shake it from the bad ones, right? Okay, just thought I had to. Right? All right. We got a little activity going on tonight, little lamb. Oh my, Henry's on top. <laughs> Henry, you're the man. They're just not paying them any mind. Amen. Appreciate the amen. Dove, chocolate. This is awesome. Amen. We're living large tonight. Dad had to agitate the little lambs. I love it. Thank you, ladies, for that song. Thank you for the song service tonight. We enjoyed our time together as we've looked at that. Uh, tonight, just a very familiar passage probably to some, and, and uh, I hope to, hope to be a blessing to all that are here tonight. We're going to be I'm preaching a message, a very short message tonight, entitled Wisdom from the Wild, Wisdom from the Wild, in Psalm chapter 30. There's a small portion here of uh, several verses that we're going to look at. It's Proverbs chapter 30, verses 24 to 28. And so we have a set of verses here as the 
Proverbs are looking at four things which are little upon the earth. The Bible says in Proverbs 30, verse 24, there be four things which are little upon the earth, but they are exceeding wise. They answer are people not strong, yet they prepare their meat in the summer. The conies are but a feeble folk, yet they make their houses in the rocks. The locusts have no king, yet go they forth all of them by bands. The spider taketh hold with her hands, and is in king's palaces. Father, tonight we come before you and we thank you, Lord, that we can learn just by paying attention to the things around us. I thank you that the word of God has drawn our attention to things that are in the wild that have great wisdom and have great lessons for us to learn. I pray that, Father, we would uh, take hold of these verses and examine them and in light of these verses examine ourselves. Uh, Lord, I know that uh, you place a premium in your word on wisdom and getting wisdom to your children. And Lord, I pray that we would have a hunger for that. We'd have an appetite for that. We'd have a desire to lay hold on wisdom. With all of our getting, that we would get wisdom and understanding. And Lord, uh, we would value it and treasure it more than fine gold or precious stones. And so Lord, tonight you've given us four things. Little, weak, in, in the wild. But they teach us great messages and great truths regarding wisdom. So Lord, tonight we give you ourselves asking you, Lord, please speak to our hearts. I pray that, Lord, uh, our ears would be open, our hearts would be ready to receive your word into good ground. And, Lord, I pray that, Lord, our lives uh, would uh, show a definite benefit from having listened and acted according to all that we will receive tonight. We ask all this in, in the name of Jesus, trusting, Father, that if there's anybody among our number in the auditorium tonight or watching online tonight uh, that may be doing so without uh, saving faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, that they would not leave that way, they would not leave this service that way. But they'd realize that Jesus Christ uh, has already paid the price for their sins. And Lord, that they must come to him by faith, uh, Lord, to be saved. So Lord, please make that clear. Uh, and I pray that Lord, you just give me the power to preach what you've laid upon my heart to preach. Hide me behind the cross. And Lord, please, I just pray that you just meet with us in a very special way. We love you. And it's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. Wisdom from the wild. Uh, again, there be four things which are little upon the earth, but they are exceeding wise. And so uh, God placed in these little uh, uh, these little things, uh, great wisdom, and we can learn from them. We ought not to dismiss them as insignificant. That would be the tendency for our eye to look at them and say they're small. They've got nothing to teach us. Uh, I've learned uh, another adage that uh, big things come in small packages sometimes. Amen. And so God's got a lot of wisdom jammed into these little, uh, these little things. And so we're going to take a look at them tonight. Some of you've been through this passage, passed right over. Thing there is, so God might bring something out you might not or tonight. So you just kind of hang on with me. I don't tune God out. Don't tune His word out. And I promise you, there'll probably be something. Hey, who snuck in here? Oh my! How am I supposed to preach with her back there? <laughs> Quickly, yeah, so I can get to... there you... they, they, They're going to love you, brother. Amen. <laughs> I got Caroline back there, my granddaughter, first trip to church. Amen. So I'm going to have a hard time. I'm going to be distracted. Amen. I'll, 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 Lord help me. Amen. But it's good to have Nathan and Emily with us tonight and little baby Caroline. So excited about her first trip to church. And I want to get done and preach. Who got, you want to take my notes and preach one, brother? I want to go back and sit with my granddaughter. Amen. I'll give you the notes you could preach on. Amen. Now we'll get through this. But there are four, four things here. Tonight I want to talk to you first of all, uh, as the Bible looks at it uh, with us at verse number 25. The ants are a people not strong, yet they prepare their meat in summer. So when we take a look at the ants, we take a look at the, uh, the wild here. God directs our attention to the ants. And the ants are given to us as an example of uh, this word preparation. Uh, again, uh, the Boy Scouts have a motto, be prepared. And I think that's good uh, for them, but I think it's good for us. Christians, we ought to be prepared. And so God gives us an object lesson in the ant. Uh, and when we look at the ants, we know this about them. They know the time for work. And they do their work when the time comes. This is their wisdom. Christian, I, I think if we look at Ecclesiastes chapter 3 and realize there's a time to every purpose under the heaven. Uh, God's got seasons. God's got times for everything. And instead of fighting the seasons, look, I'm glad for the summertime, amen. When winter gets here, I'll moan and groan about the snow and the cold. But you know what? You can fight the season, but it's there. And, and, and again, I, find, I think sometimes we fight the seasons uh, that God has placed into our lives. And instead of fighting those, we've got to see the importance and the wisdom behind those so we can benefit from the lessons that... Uh, those seasons have to teach us. Now, in the same vein, we have the ants uh, that have been given wisdom in their little teeny weeny little bodies. We are, we've got some ants that are in our kitchen right now. Amen. And I see them scurrying across and I just, you know, mash them. Amen. Because I don't like ants. 
Uh, we put out ant traps in there, and it's getting some of them. Uh, uh, but uh, uh, they, they, they're, they're small. They're not strong. Uh, they're easy to, uh, at least one at a time, to mash. Amen. When they get mashed up, they're a little, a little different story there. Uh, but, but the ants, the wisdom that they have is that they are prepared. They know the time for work. They do their work when the time comes. This is their wisdom. Christian, we need to be prepared. And as Christians, we have prepared to a certain extent, have we not? We know that eternity is coming. We know that our life is but a vapor that appears for a little time and then vanishes away. And then there's this vastness called eternity after this life is over. And looking at that and looking at our unpreparedness to face eternity without a Savior, we've turned to faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. That is the ultimate preparation. That is the first step of preparation that everyone needs. Amen. And if you're not prepared for eternity, you just plain out are not prepared. Amen. So as Christians, we've taken the step of preparations preparing for eternity. But again, there's other, other things that we ought to consider uh, preparing. For the Bible says in Proverbs 22 3, a prudent man foreseeth evil and hideth himself, but the simple pass on and are punished. I'll give you an example. There was no way for any one of us in here back in uh, January, February of last year, to, to, uh, there was no way that any of us could known to start hoarding toilet paper. There, there was just no, there was nothing there that was indicating that there's going to be a run on toilet paper. N nothing, amen? Especially when you're considering a respiratory disease. I have no idea why toilet paper became a hot commodity, but it did, amen? And so what happens? People look for the supplies. Who's got it? Who doesn't? Where can you get it, amen? Uh, water, bottled water, amen? Uh, again, it was almost like snow, amen? When snow starts, uh, the forecast for snow, what do people rush out and buy? Milk, right? They got milk, eggs. Bread, toilet paper, amen, the ubiquitous toilet paper. So what are you saying? Buy toilet paper, amen, you'll always be prepared. No, the, 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 the ants, they know when to work. They know winter's coming. They know, uh, like Jesus Christ said it this way. He said, uh, I must work the works of him that sent me while it is day. The night cometh when no man can work. So what we're going to do for Christ, we can't count on there being a tomorrow. Well, again, we ought to just say, if the Lord wills, that's what the Bible tells us in the book of James' wisdom. But as we take the wisdom from James, we ought to apply our hearts uh, and, and throw ourselves into everything that God gives us to do right now. Okay? And so the ants are teaching us that. So when you see an ant, think preparation. When you see an ant say, you know what, God put a, little, a lot of wisdom in that little teeny mean little body, and they, they know when to work. Do you know when to work? We, we're, we're in a society right now that's forgotten to work. They're, they're, they just become, uh, in many quarters, so custom just to getting that money from the government. Uh, employers are, are, are crying for people to work. Restaurants uh, are shutting down uh, part of the week because they can't get enough people in there to work. Now's not the time to be lazy. Now's the time to be industrious and, and, and labor. Uh, why? Because God's given us that to do right now. We look at the ants. Uh, they know when it's time to work. They know what, when that time comes. And that's their wisdom. And again, we talked about the prudence of, 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 of foreseeing the evil. Again, the evil of dying without the Lord Jesus Christ. We've hid ourselves in him. And again, we've received that salvation that God has through the Lord Jesus Christ. I, I think about the warning that uh, God gave to Israel because they rejected the prophets and, and continually held on to their idolatry. And, and, and God says, I'm going to cut you short. Short. I'm going to give you cleanness of teeth, which meant famine. I'm going to destroy your cities like Sodom and Gomorrah. He said, I'm going to do all these things to you. And as he was giving them a warning from the prophet Isaiah, here's what he said in Amos 4.12. Therefore, thus will I do unto thee, O Israel, and because I will do this unto thee, prepare to meet thy God, O Israel. Again, that's something that all ought to be prepared to meet, prepared to meet God. If we're his child, we are prepared in Christ Jesus to meet our God. Wonderful, amen. The, uh, the old account was settled long ago. We sang that tonight, amen. Uh, that means that our sin, our, our sin account has been cleared. Amen. We are made righteous because of the Lord Jesus Christ. We are without sin. Uh, again, and what a wonderful, wonderful truth that is. But preparation. We look at the ant preparation. Uh, we see things coming. Uh, uh, again, we, we prepare for those things. Um, uh, when should you go out and get firewood? Now. Right? Because winter's coming. If we, we think about it, now's the time to get the wood and stack it and everything like that. Get it ready for this season. It's looking ahead. It's being prepared for these things. And so the ants teach us uh, the, the, the wisdom of, of preparation. Now we come to our second uh, object lesson here. The second uh, 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 gift of wisdom from the wild here. And verse number 26, the conies are but a feeble folk, yet they make their houses in the rocks. Uh, the conies, uh, what these animals lack in strength, they make up for in wisdom. Wisdom. They dart. They run to their mountain uh, hideouts and are safe. They have no natural defenses. Uh, uh, and uh, so they, uh, in, in wisdom, uh, made the rocks their habitation and are stronger in those rocks than all the powers, all the predators that might come against them. They know they have no natural defense, so they run to the rocks, hide in the rocks where they cannot be touched. So they speak to us, not of prepara the preparation of the ants, they speak to us of protection. 
Who's our protector? Who is protecting you? You know, I'm not, and when it comes to salvation, I'm not holding on. I'm being held on to. When it comes to salvation, it's not the strength of my hand that matters. It's the strength of God's hand around me that's holding me. Amen. Protection. I, I like what the, the psalmist said in Psalm 18. One. Um, David said, I will love thee, O Lord, my, my strength. The Lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer, my God, my strength, in whom I will trust, my buckler and the horn of my salvation and my high tower. You get the idea that David said, God, you are the fort. You are, you are my protection. I, I'm not turning anywhere else. I can't run anywhere else. God, you are everything. You are, what does he say? Uh, you are my rock uh, like the conies. Amen. You're my rock like the conies. Uh, you're my fortress, my deliverer, my God, my strength, uh, the buckler, the horn of my salvation, my high tower. God, you are everything. You are everything I need when it comes to the matter of protection. Protection. I don't know. About, I don't know about you, but I think one of the one of the, uh, one of the benefits of being saved is knowing we have a we have a protector, Amen. knowing that God's watching over us and God is for us. Amen. And if God be for us, then who could be against us? And, and we understand what uh, John was uh, encouraging uh, uh, in his epistle in First John chapter four: Greater is He that's in you than He that's in the world. Uh, we, we we carry our protection around with us wherever we go. Not only do we have divine protection, we have the we have the protection of the armor that He's given us to wear every day as we go out into battle every day. Amen. Helmet of salvation. Breast Plate of righteousness, uh, uh, the shield of faith, amen. Our loins girded about with the truth, our feet shod with the preparation of the gospel peace. We are armored and prepared and protected uh, as we enter every day. So, the conies, uh, again, feeble, uh, unable to defend themselves, but their wisdom comes, they, their, their quickness to get to their rock, amen. Their quickness to get and defend themselves, uh, get, get to their defenses, which are the rocks. Uh, the psalmist said in Psalm 91 2, I will save the Lord. He is my refuge and my fortress, my God, in him will I trust. You know, there are certain segments of society uh, that uh, uh, when uh, they, are, they, they encounter uh, opposing political views, they, 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 they uh, run uh, to, their, to their safe rooms, to their uh, rooms with puppies and kitties and, and coloring books and crayons and, and cookies and, and, and cotton balls, whatever they run to. That, that's their safe place. But you know what? I want to say this. Uh, when, when the heat's on, when the, when the struggle's on, I know where my protection's at. It's not in a safe, it's not in a safe place. It's in, it's in my Savior. That's where I run to, amen? Uh, when life gets to be overwhelming, life gets to be too much, and, and oftentimes it does when the storms get to beating so heavy, I'm glad I can run to my, my safe harbor, and my safe harbor, my protector is my is my savior and that's where we need to run to amen uh, he, he is our, our refuge and our fortress our God and him will we trust so again uh, the ants uh, give us the wisdom of preparation the conies give us the wisdom of protection now we come down to the next ones and we see the locusts are now mentioned the locusts have no king Yet they yet go they forth all of them by bands. Uh, the locusts uh, their, their work through the Bible is nothing but plague and ruin. But it's not the character of their work, uh, but it's their wisdom to do their work and, and the system on which they do it that is, that is to draw our attention here. And so it's not them just destroying all the greenery when they are when they're feasting upon that or the destruction that they wreak on the uh, on the vegetation when they when they are gathered to a certain place. But it's how they get to that certain place and how they affect their work there. When we look at the locusts, we see this word purpose. We see this purpose. So let me continue on with the uh, with, with the locusts here. We, like the locusts, have an allotted work to do, and we must do it together. One, one man's work may uh, be by itself very little, but when we add it together, it produces a great whole. The most striking fact uh, regarding the locust swarms was their apparent order and discipline sweeping over the land like an invasion of a great army. As a matter of fact, that's what they're often compared to in the Bible, just like a mighty army uh, going forth. Uh, uh, the Bible even says here, by bands or by order, by rank there. Uh, they get together in one place. They associate and join themselves in bands and keep together, though they have no ruler over them. They are an emblem of unity, of concord, and harmony. Uh, something that God values very highly in the church. Amen. Amen. Behold how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. Again, we look at the day of Pentecost. One of the chief characteristics of the day of Pentecost was the church was in one accord in one place. Amen. And, and so uh, the locusts are showing us some very great biblical values here. So they get together. Uh, and again, are pictures of unity, concord, harmony. And uh, uh, again, they, they are all gathered together. And when they move from place to place, they move in a body in a very regular manner, in precise order, as the words may be rendered in our verse here tonight, uh, with great exactness. Exactness, everyone in his proper place, all in rank and file. And though they have no general to marshal them, yet they are in good order, as just as a good army is. 
So what do we know about the locusts here? Uh, they're, they're, they're the wisdom that they show us. Uh, one of the things we know about the locusts is they have no visible leader or ruler over them. How are we doing, church? Never seen Jesus Christ with these eyes. But, you know, we can follow him, can't we? So, again, uh, we have no visible king, yet we are made wise when we come to faith in him to see who, him who is invisible. And the Bible says in 1 Peter 1.7, that the trial of your faith, being much more precious than of gold that perisheth, though it be tried with fire, might be found under the praise and honor and glory at the appearing of Jesus Christ, whom, get this, having not seen, ye love. In whom, though now ye see him not, yet believing, ye rejoice with joy unspeakable and full of glory, receiving the end of your faith, even the salvation of your souls. What's the Bible saying there? We can be led forth, even though we haven't seen our king, and even though uh, we've not laid eyes upon him, we still love him and can still be led by him. Just like the locusts, they don't have a visible king. They go forth by bands. They do the work that they're called to do. Uh, again, although it's destructive and everything like that, uh, they go forth by bands. They keep order. So too should the church. Our, our, our head is invisible, uh, but we will We'll see him one day. Amen. We know he's there and we ought to go forth by bands, being in our place, fulfilling our purposes. Every child of God has a part to play and no one's work is unimportant. Amen. We, we might look, we might, we might not, we might not always look at it that way, but that's true. Anything we do for God's important. Why? Because it's not what we do. It's who we do it for. That's important. Let me just say this. If, if the only thing you did for God was to pick up some trash on the parking lot. Or to push a chair back into place, or shake hands with somebody, or say hello, or just have a smile on your face coming in here. If you're doing that for the Lord God, that, that is of an inestimable value there. I'm not just saying that's all we should do, but I'll tell you what, these are the little things that sometimes go unnoticed. But I'll tell you what, they are things that we need to do, and that's going to make more sense when I get to the next point. But again, uh, everything we do uh, ought to be done for him, even though we've never seen him, we can do that. So they've got no visible king or leader. Just like us, uh, but they go forth uh, by bands. And the Bible says, uh, uh, although they have no king, they are purposed, uh, uh, purposed in this. They go forth by bands. They're gathered together. When I thought about them going forth by bands and them being described as an army, uh, uh, just uh, keeping rank and things like that, going forth by bands, uh, I thought about when David was anointed king. After all the battles of Saul and after Saul and Jonathan died at the hands of the Philistines, uh, Israel came together uh, after the battle uh, uh, with uh, Saul's uh, family there. Uh, Israel came together to anoint David king over the entire nation of Israel. He's already king in Hebron. Judah had already made him king. Benjamin had already made him king. Or not hadn't made him king, but Judah had made him king. And so when all of Israel gathered, Gather together to make David king. The Bible says in 1 Chronicles 12, 33, about the men of Zebulun, such as went forth to battle, expert in war, with all instruments of war, 50,000, which could keep rank. They were not of a double heart. They could keep rank. They knew their place. They knew what they were to do. And they kept rank. Why? Because they were double heart. They figured they're in the army and they were uh, marching forth to war. Uh, that, that was what their focus was on. It says a little bit later about the uh, men that were gathered together to David to make David king. In 1 Chronicles 12, 38, five verses later, all these men of war that could keep rank came with a perfect heart to Hebron to make, king, to make David king over all Israel. And all the rest also of Israel were of one heart to make David king. Uh, king, and, and so we see the uh, going forth together by bands. That one heart, that singleness of mind. What what is our job as a church? Let's bring honor and glory to our Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. That, that's our job. How do we do that? We do that by singing His praises. We do that by studying His Word. We do that by encouraging other people along the way. We do that by inviting other people to examine Christ and come to faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. We do that by ministering to the needs of other people. That, that's what we do. Why we bring honor and glory to Him. That's that's our job is to bring honor and glory to God. You think about what the song being sung in heaven and will be sung in heaven throughout eternity. Thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and power. For thou hast created all things and for thy pleasure they are and were created. That's our job. How do I, how do I bring glory to God? How do I bring praise to him? By, by doing what I'm supposed to do as a husband, as a father, as a friend. As a servant of Christ, uh, in, my, in my occupation, as a pa occupation, my calling as a pastor, uh, it's not a job, amen, it's a calling. Uh, but I, I, I serve him, I want to serve him and, and serve him faithfully. And serve him uh, in, in a manner that's pleasing to him, that, that, that reflects well upon him. But can I say this? Uh, you don't have to be a pastor to serve God. You don't have to be a pastor to keep rank. You can be a housewife and keep rank. You can be a, a mama and keep rank. You can be, uh, you, you can be a, an engineer and keep rank. Because God's given us everything to do. 
And it's just saying, you know what? God gave me this job. God gave me this opportunity. God has put me in this station in life. Guess what? I'm going to keep rank and do what God's called me to do and add my, add my talents and my abilities and my efforts to everybody else's. And we'll see what God can make out of, uh, out of all that together. So the locust, again, one locust doesn't, uh, doesn't uh, cause really much alarm. You get them all together doing the same thing, they, 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 will, they will trash a place. Amen. Church, our strength is, is in our unity to him. And what a wonderful privilege we have to serve our great God together. So we've seen the ants, they, they speak to us and, and give to us the wisdom of preparation. We've seen the conies, and they speak to us of the wisdom of protection and finding our protection in our Lord Jesus Christ, who is our rock and our fortress and our deliverer and our high tower. Uh, we, we just examined the locusts to speak to us of the wisdom of just understanding our purpose. And our purpose is to bring honor and glory to our God and to serve him uh, uh, in a way that's pleasing to him. But now we come to the last one. And I'll be honest with you, I'm not too fond of these. I know they're helpful, but I, they scare me. Okay? Uh, the spider. Okay? Anybody like spiders in here? Is anybody afraid of spiders? I, I'm terrified. I don't like them. Especially the, the, the hairy ones that jump. The ones that are watching you come at them and they, they like leap like three or four feet. They scare the mess out of me. Uh, out th where's Miss Myrna there? Um, one, that one day there was one of those big black spiders in, in the office and I made Brother Roger come in. <laughs> And I gave, I gave my hockey stick. I had a hockey stick in there. I, this thing, I kid you not, it was, almost, it was almost that, I mean, just with his leg sticking out there. And I said, Ugh. So Brother Roger, uh, I know he looked at his pastor and, said, and shook his head. But Brother Roger fears nothing. So he took the hockey stick and just whacked the mess out of that thing. And I, I don't know, we just, we threw that, we threw it all away. It was all good. I mean, but just, my heart was pounding. My heart's pounding right now telling the story, amen. And the thing was, it was hiding under a box. When I moved the box, there it was, Amen. And it was quick and ugly and hairy, and I just, uh, Tammy wasn't there to kill it, so uh, I got Brother Roger, amen. <laughs> You're telling tales on yourself. Maybe a little bit, amen, but Brother Roger did kill it, and I'm forever grateful, amen. He's my hero, so uh, I should have got him a spider-killing badge. Um, but spiders do have a, a value, and they do have wisdom for us, even though they terrify me. They do have some wisdom that we can learn from. What do we see about the spider? The Bible says the spider taketh hold with her hands, and is in king's palaces. The spider is an example of private work and of patient toil. One commentator says she aims at no great and showy things. She is there to show us the worth of diligence in little things and in private duties. You know, you know it's, it's not our public service of the Lord that's everything. It's what we do with the Lord outside of this building. It's not just what happens on Sundays and Wednesdays. It's what happens on Mondays and Tuesdays. When, when we're not gathered together. It's what happens in our prayer closets in private. Thank God for the prayer meeting on Wednesday night. Very well attended. I'm excited about that. But you know what? It's the prayer closet at home that makes things move. Amen? It, it, is it our studies only on Sundays and, and Wednesdays that, that, that brings us strength and wisdom? No, it's those studies that we do at home that help out as well. Let's never forget that. The spider's teaching us that, that it's sometimes it's the unseen things, the unnoticed things that are, that are, that are immensely important as well. The spider doesn't get any acclaim. As a matter of fact, when she spins her web, if somebody sees it, what, the, what does the cleaner do? The cleaner knocks it down. It's got to be rebuilt again. Have you ever looked at a spider's web and considered the geometry of the spider webs? They're incredible pieces of work. Amen? Terrifying to run into with your face. Right. Terrifying when they get in your hair. I have a little bit of hair, and so anything on me, I'm feeling on my scalp, right? So, but, uh, but, the, but the spider toils all the night, and what wasn't there when you came home from work is there the next morning when you're going back out to work, right? And, and again, sometimes it's like a, a trap, you know, that they've set for us, and they weren't expecting to catch human, something human size, amen? But they do. Uh, uh, but they, they, they work, they toil, they spin with their hands, and unappreciated, unnoticed, but still beautiful works of art. So God's speaking to us and showing us some wisdom and, and, and taking care of our private lives, right? Thank God for the prayers offered up in this place, but thank God more for the prayers offered up in your home. Thank God for the Bible studies done here as we're gathered together, as we hear the sermons and the Bible studies and, and, and the challenges and the, and, and the truth put forth from behind the pulpit or from behind the, uh, the, 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 in, in the classrooms for our little ones. But thank God for what's going on in your home and your personal time of study. These are things that the spider's teaching us. What does she do? She labors with her hands. She spins with her hands. Takes hold with her hands. And it's in king's palaces. The spider doesn't court public gaze. This world's not particularly favorable to the presence of spiders. In nature, the bird would gladly snap up a spider and, and, and devour it. Again, the cleaner would willingly sweep his work away. 
the spider is contented to do his own work without exciting either admiration or envy. The spider is not seen, yet he works. His work is all of the best. There are no, there are no empty, useless threads. There are no unfinished corners. His web is geometrically perfect. He might catch his prey with a carelessly made trap or an unsightly web, but he never attempts to do so. He's always working toward perfection, even though his work sometimes goes unseen, unnoticed, or is quickly swept away upon its notice. Let me just say, that there, there's something to serving the Lord without needing applause. There's something to serving the Lord without the need for admiration and attention. Why? Because that's when God gets the glory, when it gets done. The spider's teaching us that wisdom there. One commentator said, we may do well to learn the, the least thing we undertake with the best of our ability and not to shirk our duties because we suppose that our work will not be observed. Whatever, uh, let me just give you a couple verses. You know these verses. Uh, Ecclesiastes 9.10, whatsoever the hand findeth to do, do it with thy might, for there's no work, nor device, nor knowledge, nor wisdom in the grave, whither thou goest. In Romans 12.11, not slothful in business, fervent in spirit, serving the Lord. And 1 Corinthians 15, 10. But by the grace of God, I am what I am. And his grace, which was bestowed upon me, was not in vain. But I labored more abundantly than they all. Yet not I, but the grace of God, which was with me. And then in Colossians 3, 23. And whatsoever you do, do it heartily as to the Lord and not to men. What is the spider teaching us? Just, just patience. Just keep working. Whether somebody notices it or not. Whether somebody appreciates it or not. Why? Because God... Nothing escapes the attention of a God, of our God. Amen. And what might go unnoticed by a brother or sister, might go unnoticed by a church, a family member, or a friend, never goes unnoticed by God. You keep doing what God's put in your hands to do, and do it for Him. And guess what? God will take care of the applause. God will take care of the promotion. God will take care of the advancement. God will take care of the blessings. That's, that's in His time and His way. But let's just be content to do what God's given us to do with all of our might. Why? Because it's for His glory and for His good that we do these things. So what, are the, what, is, what is the wild taught us tonight? What are these things in the wild taught us tonight? The ants have taught us the wisdom of preparation. The locusts have taught us, the, or the conies have taught us the wisdom of seeking protection in the right place. The locusts have taught us the wisdom of having a purpose and a common purpose as we go forward together. And then the spider has taught us the, the purpose of patience. Just keep working at what God has given us to do. And what a wonderful lesson we have tonight of just the wisdom from these little creatures. None of them exceedingly strong in their own right. None of them ex exceedingly noticeable in the grand scheme of, of nature. But they're there and living and displaying wisdom that every child of God needs and ought to lay hold on as well. So tonight, these four little things have taught us some great big things when it comes to the uh, arena of wisdom. May we learn well from these little ones tonight. Heavenly Father... We thank you for tonight. We thank you, Lord, for your love. We thank you, Lord, for nature, Lord, for creating the animal kingdom, for creating the, the, the bugs and the, and, the, and the insects and the spiders, even the spiders, Lord, uh, because you have placed in them wisdom that we can learn from and be bettered by. So, Lord, uh, as we look around, Lord, uh, how often our, our attention is, is, is uh, uh, attracted by the nighttime sky and the stars and the, and the planets, uh, uh, that uh, are over our uh, uh, that, that we're immersed in, and, and Lord, how beautiful the work of your hands and and space is. But Lord, even if we just look to our own planet, uh, the planet that you gave to us, there are wisdom in so many different directions. And Lord, we thank you, Lord, for packing wisdom into the littlest and the weakest of things, and teaching us great lessons from them. I pray that Lord, we not let these lessons go. I pray that Lord, we'd hold them dear to our heart and benefit as we pay attention to what's going on around us. We love you tonight. Thank you for being such a great teacher and teaching us in such wonderful and unusual ways uh, about the things that we ought to value. So, Lord, we thank you, Lord, for the wisdom that the uh, ants, the conies, the locusts, and the spiders have taught us. And I pray that, Lord, we would not let these lessons go by the wayside or go to waste. But, Lord, we'd learn well uh, from their example. And, Lord, just uh, uh, be better, better equipped to serve you. Uh, Lord, uh, more ready to please you in, in all of our thoughts and deeds. And, Lord, just uh, good testimonies of your grace in our life. So we thank you, Lord, for what we've learned tonight from the scripture. We thank you, Lord, for the faith that's on display. I thank you, Lord, for Sydney, Lord, her desire to follow you in believer's baptism. And just pray that, Lord, you would uh, uh, just, uh, just bless this young lady's life. And thank you, Lord, for her tremendous spirit and, and love for you. And I just thank you, Lord, that uh, we will get to see just a, a wonderful uh, picture tonight of just uh, uh, 
uh, love and obedience as, as Sydney enters the waters of baptism. So Lord, we thank you, Lord, for all that you've done with us tonight, the, the singing, the, the fellowship, the fellowship to follow, Lord. We just pray that you'd bless it all, and Lord, be pleased. Uh, Lord, as your family uh, here at Heritage just uh, enjoys um, what you've given to us uh, in, in, in fellowship here in this place. So Lord, we love you, and uh, Lord, I just pray that tonight, Lord, if you've spoken to our hearts that we would uh, respond quickly and not have to be begged or prodded. But, Lord, we would just turn things over to you. So, Lord, whatever lesson we've learned tonight, I pray that, Lord, we would settle it to heart and, Lord, uh, begin to act upon it, uh, Lord, uh, with your power and your strength and your guidance. I'm going to ask Miss Wendy if she wouldn't mind playing a hymn of invitation. Uh, I'm going to have Brother Irwin come up here and lead us in this verse of or these verses of invitation. I'm going to ask us to stand to our feet, and we're going to get ready for the baptism in the back. Take your hymn books and turn it over to number 110. We'll sing a verse or two of that, Bill, while they get things ready here. Number 110, you may be seated. 110. Out in the highways and byways of life, many are weary and sad. Carry the sunshine where darkness is right, making the sorrowing glad. Make me a Make me a blessing. 
Sean's come out. Verse 3. We'll sing verse 3, number 110. Give my songbook back over. Yeah, we're ready. Give as was given to you and your need. Love as a master love you. Be to the helpless a helper in need. Unto your mission be true. what we are to do as Christians. We're just to be a blessing. Give to us, give unto others what was given unto us. What we need to do is share the gospel. And uh, I'll just share a little bit of note here. We do have uh, uh, visitations. Uh, we'll start a visitation up on Tuesday morning at somewhere between 10, 30, 11 o'clock. You're more welcome to come out to that. That's that geared towards our staff, but we'd love to have other folks come out if they can, if that's a good time for them. And we have every Saturday, there's a group going out and on a group on Sunday that uh, you can get plugged into. You don't have to just go to the same group just because that's who you started out with. You're more than welcome to jump around there if your schedule doesn't allow you to go out that Saturday or that Sunday or whatever. We just we're, we're, God calls us to be a blessing to those we come in contact with. And one other thing, Pastor, before you know, we still have the uh, offering plates up here for giving for Brother Hiltabittle and his needs and continue to pray for him and his recovery. And uh, we'll turn it to you, Pastor. Thank you, sir. Amen. I'd like to have you tonight. I've got uh, Sydney Sullivan, who just was baptized here. And uh, she's coming for membership in our church based upon her public profession of faith in the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and her pub very public baptism by immersion. So she meets all the qualifications for membership here. I'm wondering if there's somebody in our congregation that would like to... <laughs> yeah, you didn't have to shout. Amen. <laughs> Amen. It was going to be Jake Cardiff, whether he raised his hand or not, which was a, was a certainty there. So, amen. Becky Dean. Becky Dean, I saw hands all the way everywhere. So, I'll just put congregation, but I'll put Becky for accounting sake there. Amen. All right. All in. What's that? Did I miss anything? Amen. amen. Oh, we got a uh, premature amen there, but that's good. All in favor of receiving Sidney Sullivan in the membership of Heritage Baptist Church, would you kindly signify with a hearty amen? Amen. amen. Are there any opposed? Surely there are none. All right. Well, when you see Miss Sydney come on out, you, you shake her hand and just uh, you pray for her. Amen. We know. Uh, again, just when we do things for God, that it doesn't go unchallenged. Right. And so you pray for her and welcome her into the fellowship. She's just been a dear blessing and a dear friend. Uh, she was an unofficial member, but now is official. And so it's a wonderful, wonderful step she's taken tonight to follow the Lord and Believer's baptism. And so very happy for her. Well, let's stand and be dismissed in a word of prayer. Don't forget... Uh, Shaved ice for a price, and all that's going to help uh, our missionaries, the Millers, going to Peru. And they're getting ready to get their tickets so they can make Peru. And so we're pretty excited about that. So uh, you uh, take some time to get a, a sweet, cool, refreshing treat after church and be a blessing to our missions, our missionary family, the, the Millers. And that'll be an exciting thing as well. As we get ready to head on out and conclude services tonight, I'm going to ask, um, who can I ask tonight to pray for us tonight? Jake already left. He scurried out here. I was going to get him to pray. So. That was good. Good. Brother Bain, Pirates win today? Did the Pirates win today? They did. That's a great time to pray then, right? <laughs> to thank him. Amen. So would you offer up a prayer tonight as we, uh, we dismiss tonight? Thank you. Yes, Lord. Amen. God bless you. Have a great evening. We'll see you around the shaved ice.